Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler, as always, with Cool Stuff Inc. And this is Mono Blue Spirits, everybody. And I have to play this deck at 5 0 to League. It's a new take on Spirits, but more than anything, it is playing my preview card from Brainstorm Brewery, my podcast, Shackle Guys. It can only block creatures with flying. However, you can tap two and tap three at your control to tap a creature. It's a two mana, two, two flyer. So. You've seen Bant Spirits, you've seen Blue-White Spirits, you've seen all these different builds of Spirits, but thanks to Corset 2021 and Lofty Denial, we can play Mono Blue Spirits now. So this is a pretty neat deck. Let's sort of uh, walk through what we're doing here. In some ways, it'll look like a Spirits deck. In some ways, it'll look like a Mono Blue Devotion deck. It's got a lot of different stuff going for it here. Uh, so let's start at the bottom. The one drops you expect. You've got your Mausoleum Wanderers. It gets bigger with more Spirits. Uh, and your Spectral Sailors. This is <laughs> randomly a Spirit Pirate, as it were. Uh, but it also has Flash, and it flies. So it works with uh, everything in our deck including Lofty Denial. Now, this is what I want to talk about here. Counter-target spell unless his controller pays one. Well, that's a four spike. That's a playable-ish card, at least historically. Uh, but this one costs two mana. However, if you control a creature with flying, it counters that spell unless they pay four instead. And as you might have noticed, we have a lot of flying creatures. All these one drops we mentioned have flying. Rattle Chains, giving your spirits hexproof, allowing you to cast them with flash. That has flying. Shackle Geist has flying. Supreme Phantom buffing those spirits. It has flying. Nebel Gas Herald that can tap down things. It has flying. Brazen Borrower. Okay, well, it's not a spirit, but it does have flying. Uh, C Dasher Octopus, an actual no flying creature in the deck here, but. It's an octopus. It's a cool card. Uh, and, of course, you can mutate it onto any of your other creatures, meaning that when they deal combat damage to a player, you get a draw card. So a lot of our deck can play at instant speed. The Curious Obsessions obviously can't, but this is just a very powerful card. But Dive Down, instant speed protection. Spell Pierce, instant speed protection. Uh, Rattle Chains, well, that has Flash. Shackle Geist does not. Supreme Phantom does not. However, with Rattle Chains out, they do. Of course, Spectral Sailor already has Flash. Nubble Gas, uh, uh... Herald has Flash, and so does Brazen Borrower. So we have a sweet deck here that can play largely at instant speed. We've got awesome counterspell options. We've got card advantage options. We've got some disruption here. There's a lot to like about this deck, and that's why I'm showing it off here on Punting Pioneer. 19 islands in this one. Uh, under the sideboard, pretty much what you expect. We only have one color after all, but Mystical Disputes, Ether Gusts, you've seen all of these before. Disdainful Stroke for expensive spells. Damage Sphere when you need it, and a Soul Guide Lantern when you need to hit a Graveyard. So that's the deck, everybody. I'm calling it Lofty Spirits. It's Mono Blue Spirits. It's Lofty Denial, whatever you want to call the deck. It is a really neat take on Mono Blue and on the Spirits archetype. So here we go on Punting Pioneer. Let's jump into the games. All right, time for Lofty Spirits. And I have to say, this looks like a keeper to me. One and twos. Now, four lands is obviously quite a bit in this deck. However... I think it'll be okay. I mean, this pays us off for having a lot of excess mana if it sticks around. Uh, looks like our opponent uh, did not mulligan. That's okay, though. Uh, we get to just play this game largely at instant speed, too, which in itself uh, is quite nice. Now, obviously, I didn't want to draw another island there, but uh, I have to say, Spectral Sailor on one, Rattle Chains on two. Hopefully, just continue to play at instant speed from there. I don't know what our opponent's up to quite yet with this Simple of Enlightenment, but that seems like a, a really reasonable plan to me here, and there they are on a, a slow start, as it were, with that tapped uh, Glacial Fortress there. It begins. Brazen Borrower. That's a nice one, and I have to say, we could, uh, against this deck in particular, depending on how many, you know, what they decide to do, we may end up playing a lot of this deck uh, at instant speed and pretty straightforward. I may not even have anything to petty theft here with the bounce of the Brazen Borrower. I may just end up playing it as a three-drop flyer that, that beats down. Uh, I have to say, though, I did not expect Darkseal Citadel out of my opponent, so this should be interesting. I guess we're going to find out what's up here. The question is, oh my gosh, come on. Are you doing anything with the artifact? Okay, Sahili Sublime Artificer. Good card, powerful card, have to say. However, I don't really know if it's going to get the job done here. I'm just going to play this Rattle Chains for, you know, quote-unquote no value here. But, uh, with that said, we probably don't even have to worry about this Sahili, unless it's somehow a combo piece using its ability, which, uh, frankly, Sahili's almost never are. They're just made to make tokens, but I don't care about those tokens so much. I can just attack my opponent here, I think, and uh, attempt, anyways, 
to just ignore the Sahili for the entire game. Because look, we're going to pass a turn here. We're going to play Shacklegeist. And we're going to play Spectral Sailor. We can even tap down a creature uh, with that if we need to. Look at this. Tap to untap spirit you control. Tap a creature you don't control. So with the flash provided here by Rattle Chains, we could do both of these on the end step if we wanted. Meanwhile, our opponent, Servo Expedition. I'm sorry, Exhib... Can't say this word. <laughs> Exhibition. Uh, all right, so you got a lot of servos there, friend. Not sure what you're going to do with them, per se, but I have to say, this looks all right for us here. This is a lot of creatures we're putting into play. A lot of flyers. I would not hate to draw a Supreme Phantom, got to say, but uh, Castle Vantress, also not the worst. All right, well, if we were going to ignore the Sahili before, we're certainly going to ignore it now. Let's get in there. There's got to be some kind of combo that my opponent's playing here uh, involving artifacts. That has to, some kind of, I don't know, I'd say Polymorph would be the old one, right? All right. Immolating Glare to take out the Shacklegeist, huh? Yeah, sure. Shacklegeist down, I guess. That's not so bad. I think Rattle Chains might have been the one they wanted to hit. That said, I don't know if that will end up being particularly relevant. We're getting in for four. Knocking him down to 12. The Brazen Bar already has Flash. So that doesn't uh, matter. I'm not sure what to do here, though. I guess we'll see what my opponent does, but... I think almost everything's on the table here. From Petty Thefting something, to just casting Brazen Bar War, to just activating Spectral Sailor. Really gonna have to see how the board shapes up here. I, like I said, I'm not entirely sure what my opponent's up to here. However, they have a lot of servos. So any kind of, like, Coat of Arm effect or anything like that would make these servos... Very big, very quickly. So I kind of like the idea of actually saving this Brazen Borrower. Um, that said, were I to cast it, I would get in for 7 this turn. I think I like just casting it. Bouncing these things doesn't matter quite yet. I mean, bouncing whatever they, the payoff for those is might matter. But I think I like just putting my opponent on a 2-turn clock, especially... Yuck, it's a lot of land. Uh, in a situation where... I can draw a card, you know, or scry. This ex this excess mana here is not going to waste, and this really turns the screws on my opponent to have an answer for uh, most of our board almost immediately. They're not going to get there with a servo beatdown, at least, because we're on a two-turn clock here. That said, my opponent plays, and I have to assume this is where this is going, they play Tempered Seer or something, and we're going to be in trouble, but uh, instead, looks like they're just going to take down the Brazen Borrower. Um, I guess that I should activate the spe Spectral Sailor or choose to Castle Vantress. I think I like just activating. If we had a Spell Pierce here, we can actually counter the Immolating Glare. Uh, we did not. However, that's not the worst draw. We still get in for four. Well, my opponent actually is cracking back now for eight. So they actually do have us dead, not this turn, but the next. The Servo Beatdown might just get there. I mean, look, this is what we knew Sahili would do. And at the time, I didn't know what my opponent was up to. You know, there might have been a world where I, I did go after that Sahili, but not knowing what they had, I, I actually thought the, the line of attacking here was, was correct. It might not work out. Our opponent was really able to, to get uh, rolling with these servos here, and having the removal was big for them. But mainly, we flooded out, right? We're on seven lands here. We're going to come up exactly one creature short uh, of winning the game, probably. But let's see what happens. Game is certainly not over. <laughs> Although, our clock at this point is uh, quite anemic. It has to be said. Alright, is there a way to string together lethal here? My opponent has exactly nine servos, so I'm going to need two blocks. I have no cards in hand. So, we certainly have some options here, I think. First line is going to be to attack. I think we send one in, and we put the Sea Dasher Octopus on it. This will deal two damage, and we'll get to draw a card. Hopefully that card will be good. Ideally a one drop here to be able to do something with this Neville Gas Herald, but uh, let's see. This is going to be a close one. Another land, huh? Well, I guess this leaves us very technically not dead. Unfortunately, I'm not quite sure how we're going to come up with lethal for our opponent. 
They send all of these sideways. It's nine of them. I'm gonna. I can tap one down with the Neville Gas Herald. I guess we're gonna have outs here. So the thing is, I can tap one down with the Neville Gas Herald. I can then block one with the Spectral Sailor. Take seven. Go to one. Then I have four flying damage, cracking back at my opponent who is at six. So Supreme Phantom actually gets us there and I'm going to be able in my upkeep to scry with the Castle Vantress to try to go find it so this is going to be a real close one here my opponent kept a card on top with this uh, Temple of Enlightenment I mean this is clearly going to be our last turn regardless here but uh, the little card on top of their deck probably not going to matter all that much all right, down to one. I have the mana to go for this here. I can scry, play a land in my main phase. So let's see if we can find a Supreme Phantom. Those are not Supreme Phantoms, and they do not get the job done, unfortunately. So I guess it's just bought them both. And hope that the top card is Supreme Phantom. Can't look. I can't look. If my opponent's slow rolling me. It's a Mausoleum Wanderer. That's not going to get it done. That'll do it. I get in for four. I draw a card. I don't think I have any outs to this, though. I can't believe we died to the Servo Beatdown. Uh, I actually don't even know if going after this, this Sahili would have made that big of a difference. Come to think of it. But uh, so be it. So be it. Uh, either Gust actually does hit Sahili. Nothing else, though. Miss... Uh, <laughs> I don't really even think we want most of this. Honestly, I think our deck is uh, pretty well set up against what our opponent's doing here. We're just going to need to uh, come out of... Oh my gosh, excuse me. <clears throat> We're just going to need to draw a little bit better here. Yeah, frankly, that game was super close. Uh, Shacklegeist, as much as I love you as my preview card, you're probably not the best here. Uh, I think I can probably also cut a Nebel Gas Herald. Oh no, what did... Oh no, I submitted... I accidentally submitted... Uh... 62. Whoops, guess we're rolling with 62 cards in this game. Uh, that said, obviously we draw a perfect hand. Not quite perfect, there's no one drop here. <laughs> it was uh, uh, quite the misclick. Don't call a Punting Pioneer for nothing. And look, I'll actually... I'll address this uh, right up front here. I know I make misplays. I know... Uh, last week, I actually had a pretty silly misplay. Uh, it can be really, honestly, frankly, difficult to talk through games and play them at the same time. And I could opt to talk less, play a little more. Uh, but that's no fun for anyone, right? The punting is part of the... It's in the title. It's part of the name. That said, it's 62 cards. Uh, look, we've all played 41 in our limited decks. I know you're not supposed to do it, but we've all done it in the past. There's 62 cards in Constructed. Eh, Yorion's legal. 60 ain't what it used to be. That said, we've got a couple options here. Uh, I could just slam the Shacklegeist on my main face. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, because ideally, next turn, we play a land, play Curious Obsession, uh, attack with the Shacklegeist, and we have the Rattle Chains up to protect it. That would be uh, the goal of what we're going for here. Now, I didn't play the Rattle Chains first, which would have allowed me to play the rest of uh, my creatures at instant speed, but it's because specifically we have this Curious Obsession and we want to use this Rattle Chains uh, to protect it uh, from our opponent's likely removal spell. I mean, they're showing us Immolating Glare again or whatever it is, uh, whatever the card they had was. But this looks much better for us. We, we get in there, we get in with a Curious Obsession. Hopefully we get a draw card off of this here. I mean, even better, frankly, if my opponent does something like this, seal away... Trying to two for one us, but Rattle Chain's gonna prevent that one. So not only does Rattle Chain sort of counter the seal away while also leaving behind not just a two one body, but a two one flying body that gives all of our spirits flash. We also get a draw card now off of the Shacklegeist. So this is uh this is looking pretty good here. Our opponent. Obviously they're gonna get it on tap, shields down for us, but we're at four cards in hand. We have enough lands now to cast whatever we want and to activate this Castle Vantress at will. Uh, and we have two cards we can play next turn at instant speed. 
should we need to. So what's my opponent going to do here? Place a Healy? That's actually bad. In this case, I would take an opportunity to just kill a Healy. So uh, instead, it's a Rune to Halo. I got to say, though, that is an interesting one. <laughs> it's actually kind of good. I, I, I mean, it's annoying more than anything, but I have a second Shacklegeist in my hand. Come on. Guess we'll be using these shackle guys to uh, tap down my opponent's creatures from here on out because uh, they have protection from the chosen card name. They, as a player, do so. These shackle guys can deal no damage to them. Now, I guess that's one way to answer a curious obsession. We're gonna, looks like we're going to flood out again here. All right. Well, next turn we can start scrying. That'll mitigate the flood somewhat. Uh, and I suppose I still going to get in for three. The Supreme Phantom here, probably coming up fairly clutch. Let's see uh, if they have anything. Looks like they do not. All right, down to 14. We get to pass the turn. We have an instant speed shackle guy set along with the Supreme Phantom. Can tap down a creature. Uh, frankly, the only thing I'm truly worried about here is a Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict would be pretty good against us. You can't play your shackle guys as a flash creature after the Verdict because uh, the Supreme... Or, I'm sorry, the Rattle Chains will be gone, so... Verdict actually puts my opponent in a pretty good spot here. I kind of counted on that Curious Obsession uh, really kind of uh, messing up our opponent's resources. But if that's not the case, and we get verdict Verdicted, <laughs> if our opponent has a Supreme Verdict here, uh, that'd be pretty bad for us. Uh, fortunately, though, it is a Servo Schematic. The Servo Beatdown begins. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. What does this work? When it's put into a graveyard from Battlefield, you also get one? Oh my gosh. Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, you get a Servo. This is quite the deck from our opponent. It's doing some cool stuff, I guess. <laughs> it's have to say, it's a, not what you expect to see, but it worked out pretty well for him in game one, that's for sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and tap down, I guess, one of, <laughs> tap down one of these Servos just because we can. Won't be uh, much of a concern about it when it comes to blocking, but... All right, unfortunately now, this is where we could be in trouble. That ruined Halo doing some work. The Shackle guys just on blocking duty. As we pass the turn back here. The good news uh, is that drawing this dive down, you know, in theory, our opponent won't be playing Supreme Verdict anytime soon, given that they've begun to add to their own board with these servos. Uh, and the dive down can protect our creatures otherwise. They can gain a bunch of life with Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. This game is legitimately going to be problematic what these cards are just kind of they're just kind of working right now let's see what our castle ventures reveals though a nebulgas herald and a, another supreme phantom well i don't know that i particularly need the herald here although it does have flash and yeah, maybe this is just fine maybe we'll put the herald on top and then the supreme phantom on top uh we'll draw the supreme phantom here and i guess beat down again uh, these creatures our opponent's certainly gaining an amount of life, but yeah, we're doing some damage here, too. All right, let's see what the play is here. It's another seal away. This, I have to say, this is probably pretty good for us. Our opponent is choosing to use their mana uh, to, to try to remove our creatures. That's not going to work thanks to the dive down. <laughs> the old 1-6 Supreme Phantom hanging in there. Alright, so is this gaining life? It is. So, alright, they're going to gain life. In response, I guess I'll play out this Supreme Phantom. With hey, with a Flash, rather, thanks to the Rattle Chains. So, okay, damage in. That's 6. That's half their life total. If they don't want to die, and they want to use their Tomb of the Spirit Dragon to save them... Uh, they're going to have to tie up some more mana into it because we are presenting lethal next turn. In fact, we're presenting lethal even through an activation thanks to this one. And we know we have a Nebel Gas Herald on top. So I'd say we still got some distance to go here. But without a Supreme Verdict, I've, I'm feeling pretty confident. And looks like we might be in the clear. We almost got got by that Rune Halo, though. I won't lie. Uh, it did some work, that's for sure. Here comes an attempt at lethal. Now our opponent has the Immolating Glare. All right, well, that'll take out the Supreme... I'm sorry, the, the Rattle Chains. 
However, it doesn't take out the Supreme Phantoms. Oh. <laughs> They're going to attempt to get in there for four. Our opponent's going to gain two life. All right, so our opponent is down to four. We have uh, presented lethal. They're down to one card in hand. We have lethal on board next turn, obviously outside of them activating this. So they either have to hold up mana to try to not die, or they have to do something to the board. And either way, we have access to a Nebel Gas Herald with Flash on the instep. So that will be lethal through the Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, should they choose to go that route. Uh, and if they were to wipe the board, we'd at least still have a play to try to start poking in there. But I got to say, with one card in hand for my opponent, it hasn't been a verdict yet. What is it now? It's an anointed procession. Oh my gosh. Our opponent's deck is truly something. But uh, unfortunately... For them, in this case at least, it looks like we're going to be just fine. Game three might be a different story. This could get uh, silly pretty fast, I think, frankly, between a uh, couple removal spells and anointed processions. That's a real thing. I might play 60 this time around. What do you think? I like keeping up the lofty denials. Gonna cut another shackle, guys, here. Uh, honestly, I like most of this, right? I like the... Uh, I like the spell pierces. I definitely want all my one drops. I do probably want to cut something up on the top end here. That uh, Rune Halo was pretty good against us, I have to say. Maybe it's a Curious Obsession on the draw. Cutting Curious Obsession feels wrong, though. Maybe it's just something like another Nebral Gast Herald. Or a land. Be very greedy and cut a land, go down to 19 land. <laughs> it worked out fine when we had 20 and 62, right? I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to go for a more defensive route here. I'm actually going to cut one Curious Obsession to keep all the Mystical Disputes in there. And Maybe that's the mistake. Maybe getting Mystical Dispute in there isn't what we want, uh, though it's perfectly playable as a three-mana counterspell. Yeah. Instead, we will draw this hand, and I have to say I'm a big fan of this hand. This is a Mausoleum Wanderer on one, Curious Obsession with it on two, with Spell Pierce to protect. It does not get much better than that, and then we even have the Rattle Chance to protect it for the turn after that. So, yeah, this sideboarding plan seems to have worked out. We're going to have one problematic turn from our opponent, basically, and there's the third land that also helps. Uh, there'll be one problematic turn from our opponent where they have access to two mana here, uh, and maybe they can answer our Mausoleum Wanderer. But the thing is, if we untap for our turn two, we should, in theory, play at least a large portion of this game always having interaction up in the form of either Rattle Chains or Spell Pierce. So whatever my opponent's doing with this mana right now is going to be key. And I have to say, Cogwarger's Puzzle Knot making a servo... I don't think I care about that quite yet. Uh, <laughs> as demonstrated in game one, the servos can be a problem in the long game, but uh, for right now, I think we're doing okay. Let's throw this Curious Obsession on the Mausoleum Wanderer and begin the beatdown. You know, I've played a fair amount of Mono Blue Devotion in Pioneer, and basically with the formats being as strong as they are now, you know, all the new cards come in, just upending formats, Pioneer, Modern, these have almost become rotating formats in some ways. Um, and, and that's... Uh, <laughs> obviously, I think that that is a little bit problematic. However, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I, I think it's a little bit problematic that the, the cards have been amping up so much in power. But as it relates to Pioneer specifically into this conversation... The thing with these mono blue decks, the Curious Obsession decks, basically, for lack of a better term, they rely heavily on dealing one, two, three points of damage at a time. And that can be problematic in a, in a field full of Uro. So while it feels like I have complete control of this game, I'm, my game plan looks like it's going to play out almost perfectly. Uh, what I can't do... Do I even care about this? It's just so mana efficient. I just have to let this resolve. It's mana efficient to spell pierce it, but who cares? Just another servo. Uh, the point is, two damage, three damage at a time in this Pioneer format, that's not necessarily enough. So, yeah, things feel great. We're, we're attacking with this Mausoleum Wanderer. We're doing great. We're drawing cards. That's awesome. But cards may not be the bottleneck, right? If your opponent's just doing more powerful things than you are and you can't stop them, that's problematic. And that's where, honestly, the Lofty Denial comes 
into play. And one of the reasons that this deck, as we draw one right on time here, uh, is in a good spot because having this cheap interaction on top of, you know, we've seen success out of spirit decks. We've seen success out of mono blue devotion decks to a lesser extent. Lofton and all might kind of tie it all together into this super spirit shell, which is this, you know, could be this mono blue shell here where it's a mix between devotion uh, and spirits. But having access to uh, the rattle chains is big to protect your spirits, but also just as a Supreme Phantom, being able to double your clock, essentially, when you're attacking with a bunch of 1-1s one by, by pumping them, that's a big deal in this format. And I don't think that that can really be overlooked as far as sort of the weakness or strength of this this mono blue deck that we're playing the fact that you get all the advantages of the other curious obsession decks while also getting the advantage of the spirit decks the synergy well that's something that up until this point hadn't really come together and it could be lofty denial that is sort of the trick that the, the one the piece that ties it all together obviously c dash or octopus brazen borrower this deck has gotten tools over the last few sets and now it might just come together into this uh, sort of this new deck, this new shell that's a that's a mishmash of uh, spirits and, and everything else, and it might just work out that way. Meanwhile, what won't work out for our opponent is playing this Padim. This is a nice card, Artifacts you control of Hexproof. You get to draw a card if you have the highest CMC artifact. Unfortunately for them, it's not going to resolve. And they tapped out for it, so I can lawfully de lofty denial without fear. All right, so options here abound, as you might say. Uh, I think the line's going to be to go ahead and just do this. So let's just let's just draw some cards, all right? Put this thing over and get in there for four. We have access to the rattle chains to protect our creatures, uh, should we need it. If our opponent does have a verdict, I mean, one, that's not necessarily that good for them because... Look, they've played some cards that have committed things to the board already. Excuse me. Uh, so it, it hurts them as well. And we've already drawn all these cards off of it. I mean, look, what are they going to do? Verdict, go down to three cards in hand, and we're going to have six? That's bad for them. Uh, but at the same time, look, we have Spell Pierce open to, to counter them. We have Dive Down to counter removal. We have the Rattle Chains to counter removal. And we have the Neville Gas Herald, should we need it here. So this is a big turn for our opponent, and I have a hard time seeing how they get out of this without a Supreme Verdict. And if they have Supreme Verdict, well, we just play Rattle Chains after that and attempt to beat down, I suppose. But it's probably Verdict or Bust right now if you're our opponent. This is going to be a difficult hole for them to climb out of with anything but a Wrath. Literally, actually, anything but a Supreme Verdict, thanks to the Mausoleum Wanderers, although uh, I say that. Obviously, the Ruined Halo comes down. Well, that is annoying. Is this a Sea Dash or Octopus, though? I think that might have worked out for us. Uh, we very cleverly played around this by, you know, the fact that the Sea Dash is bigger than the Mausoleum Wanderer. Uh, I, I could be wrong on how Mutate interacts with Ruined Halo, but I think we're good. I think that whichever one they name, the other one will still do damage. And the difference between doing uh, zero damage and two damage when your opponent's on this uh, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon plan... It's uh that's quite a bit. That's, that is that is definitely a lot. So let's see what else they do here. It sure looks like they're planning on just attacking and then pl activating Tomb of the Spirit Dragon on my turn. So I think my plan is this is dangerous, but with the Ruined Halo out here, I think I just run the Rattle Chains out for quote unquote no value. However, I think it means that the uh, oh my gosh, okay. A lot of abilities to click through here. I think it means that we can get in for four next turn instead of two. And I just don't want this game to go on. Oh, my, this, this thing could get out of hand at some point, right? So uh, let's hit. Let's draw. I guess we'll draw a card here. Spell Pierce becoming less useful as we go, as you might have noticed. However, Lofty Denial, in addition to Spell Pierce, that might work out. And now we have enough for the Denial uh, plus the Nebelgast Herald. As long as we're doing more damage than the Tomb can gain them, uh, they're, they're, they're just going to be in a lot of trouble either way because they're going to tax themselves three mana every turn just to do this. That's not particularly good for them. They still end up at a negative that way. Uh, meanwhile, we're just amassing cards and adding to our board. 
and they're going to have to figure out a way to impact the board themselves. So, uh, can't hit him with the Mausoleum Wander. We can hit him with the Sea Dasher Octopus. And now this uh, Brazen Borrower probably lock, locks things up for us. I can actually bounce the Ruined Halo should I need or want to this way. Here comes the Servo Exhibition. I'm going to let anything that isn't a combo piece resolve. You know, no anointed processions are going to get through or anything like that. Uh, the rest of this is, is probably okay, though. I don't know. I mean, I guess I could have lofty denied that, but uh, why, right? When I can just play this Nebel Gas Herald, bounce a ruined halo, and swing for what might be lethal? It's certainly going to be close. Oh, there's just so many triggers here. Uh, all right. Put all these sugars on here, please. Let's just yield to this one. That's a good start. All right. I think I brazen borrower this and then attack for five, eight, ten. Uh, that's lethal until they do this, uh, but that's probably fine. Petty theft, the ruined halo. Because that means the ruined halo won't be in play next turn. We can lofty denial and or spell pierce it. This seems like a difficult boat for my opponent right here. I'm feeling pretty good about our ability to beat most things, including, at this point, a Supreme Verdict. So, uh, let's see what happens. All right, another island is the draw for us. I guess we just moved to combat here. This is a big hit coming in. We're going to draw a bunch of cards off of this. I mean, it was honestly this Curious Obsession and the Sea Dasher Octopus that put this one in our favor, I got to say. And my opponent wants to gain their four, four life. Certainly not an irrelevant engine, for what it's worth, but this is a big, this is a big, big swing they're going to have to deal with. All right, draw there. It's interesting. One of these is a you may draw a card, and one of them is not. Uh, all right, land rattle chains. Look, we've got we've got it all right now. We've got access to everything. So, uh, I'd like to think we're in a good spot right here. Also worth noting, we actually did not have lethal. We were one short, regardless of anything else. But now my opponent's going to probably try to run this ruined halo back out there, and it's just not going to work. Oh, uh, now, that sure... Well, I guess I say it looks like a supreme verdict. Uh, obviously, it might not be at this point they were going to attack no matter what. Those creatures can't block my flyers, but we beat a verdict. I just play a Brazen Borrower and Nebel Gas Herald. That's five life getting in there. Suppose if my opponent had a land and they haven't played one, although I think they did. All right, Rune Halo coming back down. I guess I do care about this, just because I'd like to get my damage in here. So let's go ahead and Lofty Denial this thing. The thing is, though, do I really need to Lofty Denial this? What if I just Spell Pierced it? That's sort of the same thing. My opponent paying two, which means... Even if they get protection from something, they're going to die. Uh, so it's actually a, a way to make the spell pierce relevant in a way that it might not otherwise be. Because my opponent pays two for this, no big deal. It means they're not activating Tomb of the Spirit Dragon and they're going to lose. Uh, or I could <laughs> then continue to counter it if I wanted. But it said we win the match. We're taking it down. Mono blue, lofty denial spirits. This is my kind of deck. It felt, I won't lie, it felt a little bit like Merfolk. That was a fun one. That was a great start to this deck. Let's keep, let's, uh, let's run up another. Time for more spirits, and this looks like a pretty keepable hand to me. I have to say, I am not going to get tired of uh, one drops, curious obsession, and counter spells. This is right up my alley. I enjoy this deck. Three lands, four spells, none of which cost more than two mana. The punting pioneer dream, as a matter of fact. Uh, don't really get to play paper tournaments these days. And look, I'm not somebody who's out there grinding, trying to get onto to any circuits. Uh, one, uh, I'm a much worse magic player than I think I used to be when I, when I did have success on the tournament circuit. Uh, but also, uh, I do the coverage of these events, right? I, I just want to be there, uh, in that angle. I don't need to be trying to win all these tournaments. That's, that's not my thing. Uh, but were I to play in a tournament... Something like this would be pretty high on my list, I have to say. If this deck, you know, were to... You know, this this deck 5 to League, as you can see, we've been having some success with it thus far. Our games have looked good. This hand looks great. So, 
this deck's got something going for it, but if it was, you know, proven viable in sort of a larger field, I would, or I got a lot of testing in with it, as opposed to, you know, I had picking it up for Punting Pioneer and then putting it back down. But, uh, yeah, I would very much consider a deck like this. And now I'm just going to go Curious Obsession on this Wanderer. I'm going to play this Sailor onto it. We're going to get in for three and draw a card. My opponent, by the way, says, huge fan, never change. Well, thank you. Chat MTG for that. That was very nice. Thanks for watching. They might be less of a fan after I uh, <laughs> devastate them with this Mausoleum Wanderer, though. Start drawing cards. I mean, this is... Oops, can't do that. This is a big turn right now for my opponent, even though it is, in fact, turn two. Because if they don't do something to the board, I'm going to untap with Lofty Denial up. The card advantage engine set with the Mausoleum Wanderer. The Nebel Gas Herald, should we need it, this feels pretty good to me now. We're going to need to stop drawing lands at some point, but uh, we're quite protected otherwise. As a matter of fact, here comes... Oh, just a Grizzly Salvage. Okay, well, uh, let's see what my opponent has done here. Five cards... It is a Soul Flare deck. Okay, I played this once upon a time on Punting Pioneer. A Samut, a Questing Beast. All right, well. I believe they put the Soul Flare into their hand. So, uh, what do you say we keep up that Lofty Denial for that Soul Flare? Huh, maybe a good idea? Maybe, <laughs> maybe not the worst idea. Actually drawing that Spectral Sailor there. Pretty nice all around, because this the way this turn, and, and by this turn, I mean their turn when we play the game, is going to work out as our opponent's either going to tap out or do whatever, something we don't care about. Then we're going to add a Nebel Gas Herald to the board, or they're going to go for a uh, big Soul Flare with some scary abilities, and we're going to attempt to Lofty Denial it. And then uh, be able to play the Sailor, so we'll still get to be mana efficient in that way, add another body to attack, because, I mean... We're not going to beat the second Soul Flare, I don't think, but uh, Commune with the Gods is not a Soul Flare. Our opponent, uh, let's see here, they put a Questing Beast into their hand, and they played a land. Now, this doesn't seem great for them here, because now it's, it's just free reign for us to add another body to the field, and while it's just two, you know, it's not, come on, not exactly doing a ton here. It does add up, right? Uh, and especially now, we, we're going to get to draw more cards. One of those is a Spell Pierce. It's going to get pretty difficult for our opponent to resolve anything here. They're going to need basically two Soul Flares, I think, to get there. And as a matter of fact, let's do the math here. This is one, two, three, four, five. I can add this one to make it six, which puts them at eight. Then next turn, I attack for one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not enough. It's not enough then... Even if I add another spirit. Uh, that said, I mean, this is three mana. This is four. Our opponent's not playing any board wipes. Let's play it and get some damage in. The thing is, the uh, the Nebel Gas Herald actually can be good for tapping down a Soul Flare in the situations where that Soul Flare does not have uh, Hexproof or, or anything like that. Uh, but the beauty about Nebel Gas Herald is that it also triggers when another spirit enters the battlefield under your control. All right, here it comes, though. This looks to me like it might be Soul Flare number one. But does it even have abilities I care about? I suppose it, it does because there's a Gifted Aetherborn hitting that exile zone there. So that's a lifelink, death touch, haste. Yeah, I, I certainly care about those things. So lofty denial it is. Can you pay four for that, friend? Probably not. Unfortunately, like I said, it's not lethal for us. One, two, three, four, five, six. But I guess it's good enough if our opponent doesn't have another Soul Flare. But even if they did, they exiled their cards. How are they going to get it back? So game one down onto the sideboard. We have these Ether, Ether Gusts. I'm in. At least these Sameful Strokes, I'm definitely in. I guess we might as well play the Mystics. We've got all kinds of cards for this matchup, frankly. Uh, okay, what does this look like? 67 cards right now. I really like the Aether Gusts to slow them down. I don't think the dive downs are going to be quite as important here, our opponent. I, I think I'm more interested in stopping what they're doing than, than maybe keeping them from stopping us. 
The spell pierces are pretty medium, I think. They're certainly not bad by any means. Uh, the shackle guys could be good. We'll keep one in there. Gosh, it still only gets us to 64, does it? We'll cut a Nebel Gas Herald. I'm we'll cut a Curious Obsession. We'll cut a... I don't want to cut a Spectral Shit. I want all my one drops. I'm going to cut a Spell Pierce. And heck, I'm going to cut a land. Ooh. Greed is good, I believe is the famous movie quote. It may or may not be a misquote from that movie. I think it, uh, the full quote is uh, greed, for lack of a better term, is good. Now, I realize I'm dating myself with this reference here, so forgive me for that. Meanwhile, punished by the land strategy, going to mulligan. <laughs> Although I would have mulliganed with a one-lander, too. I say that. Here's the one-lander I'm going to keep, because this one-lander is pretty nuts. I don't think I'm going to need two Curious Obsessions, but I don't necessarily need this Sea Dash or Octopus, either. I just need to draw cards. Um, I think I put back a Curious Obsession. I think that's the, the line here. Uh, and then we just very much hope to draw a land on turn two. Oh, well. Look at that, our opponent with the answer to the Curious Obsession. Meanwhile, that's not land. I might get punished here. It certainly could happen. I put the Curious Obsession... On our creature, the Cossack Caterpillar gets it. I mean, that's actually, frankly, mana uh, positive for us, right? Our opponent will have spent three mana. We'll have spent one. Uh, how, if we draw a second land, we can just throw the, the, the Octopus on it. If we draw no land, things might be a little more difficult. But in this case, our opponent using the Gather Pack. Interesting that they're playing Ritual Suit. Good to note that there. Uh, they chose to put Cossack Caterpillar into their hand. Not a land. Curious Obsession onto the Spectral Sailor here. Look, if I get punished for it, I get punished. Sometimes you, you live by the greed, right? But if we hit a land here, it's also just going to be perfectly fine. Okay, well, we did not. You know, this deck is playing 20 lands. And look, 20 lands can be pretty low. That said, London Mulligans, the deck only needs two lands to function. I'm aware that we have some three drops, but... Basically, if you have two lands, you're going to be able to get to a third land. That's how the deck works. We're full of things like Sea Dash or Octopus. So in a situation like this, with a one drop that we're reasonably confident isn't going to get removed because it uh, has flying, it has flash, and a Curious Obsession, I think it's, and we're on the draw, it seems pretty reasonable to conclude that turn one, that's one draw step. Turn two, that's two. The Curious Obsession, that's three. We get three looks at it before we've even missed a land drop. Uh, so I actually think it's a pretty defensible keep, particularly after we mulliganed. Uh, that said, it might not work out here, but honestly, it probably still could, although maybe not now. Well, fair enough. We'll go on to game three and I'll put the island back. <laughs> hey, we had a game. We accidentally played with 62 and it worked out. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Why not? Right. I didn't know what to cut. Uh, too used to playing on Arena. Those are those bad habits. Arena always hooks you up. No, I, I, I have to say, in a paper tournament, I honestly probably would have kept this this hand as well. I think uh, I think that keeping it on seven is kind of questionable. I think keeping this hand on six, where literally, if we could consider this game where we draw one land in those first three draws, uh, and you're looking, you're looking at 19 out of 53 over three draw steps, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um... You know, we, we would have got there. We would have had all this. We'd have the Supreme Phantom. We'd have had all these lofty denials. Although this Miscutter Hydro would have probably been a problem at some point. Protection from blue can't be countered. So that's certainly a card against us. We have essentially no outs to this thing. Outside of just racing it, which is uh, yeah, something I think our deck does, or at least can do reasonably well. This one, it might be a little too late, but we'll give it a shot here. All right. It's actually the mis uh actually the miscutter hydra that that will be the problem because I mean, look, the Casa Caterpillar isn't killing us. It's not like their graveyard is particularly loaded up for a soul flare here. Wouldn't even be very good right now. Now this fair game though, where they beat us down with questing beasts and miscutter hydras, well, they might have something there. They might have someone working there. This hit is going to put us very low. What is that down to 6? Uh, hydra is going to kill us in two turns. Do we think we can 
take them out in two turns somehow. It's going to start with a land right now. There's a land. The problem is I just am not quite sure how we get there otherwise. This is where we attack for two. Puts him at ten. I can Nebel Gas Herald down this thing, go to three. Swing back for one, two, three, four, five. Even with the Supreme Phantom added, that's six, seven. I don't think it's going to be enough. We're going to need to hit... I don't even know. Shackle Jet Geist, along with a one drop, actually might have done it. We could have Shackle Geisted and played a one drop. Tap this thing down, take four, go to two. Then we would have had one, two, three, four, five in play. Even with the Lord, that only gets us to eight. Now we're dead. All right, fair enough. See if we can draw some lands this time around. On the play, this all seems much, much better for us. I'm going to take out a Soul Guide Lantern. If our opponent is going to slow down like that, sure, I'm in. I'll give this a shot. I would like to play first. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? Ask and you shall receive. Ship that hand. We'll keep this one. This looks much better. I can pretty easily throw a disdainful stroke on bottom here. I mean, this hand is by no means incredible. Namely, it lacks any way of, of turning these good cards into card advantage. That said, Mausoleum Wonder into Supreme Phantom with Rattle Chains and disdainful stroke to protect. That's actually a pretty solid clock on top of everything else. So, and Mystic Subduel will answer something of theirs at some point. I don't know for what it's worth if Mystic Subduel is the card we wanted to board in here. I have to say, I don't think I've encountered this one. I didn't play a lot of Ikoria Limited. So this card is a mystery to me in the first place. But I can see how giving a Soul Flare no abilities would be good, provided we were able to hit it. I certainly can see throwing this thing on a... Uh, it has Flash. Certainly see throwing this on a Questing Beast, making it into a 2-4 with no text boxes uh, when it has <laughs> the most text boxes otherwise. Uh, this card could work out very nicely for us here. In the meantime, we hit our land drop. That doesn't suck. Well, let's get in there. You know, three at a time is a very slow clock, but if I don't have to use the Disdainful Stroke or the Mystic Subduel this turn, uh, I can play the Rattle Change just to increase the clock. Remember, it'll hit for three with the Supreme Phantom in play. Meanwhile, my opponent playing Commune with the Gods... This is not a card I care about. And if they don't put something with Hexproof into their graveyard, I'm also not going to care about Soul Flare, which is what they put into their hand with Communion with the Gods. All right, well, let's just play out our Rattle Chains here. Hope they don't have Fatal Push, I guess. The thing is, I... I well, I guess in this case, I could uh, trade the Wanderer for the Fatal Push, but... Uh, all right, it looks like we're safe. To beat down and now i have both my spells open so i'm feeling pretty okay with where this game is at and now we're even in a position i mean one look we're hitting our opponent for what six so it's not quite lethal next turn but one more land draw typically land at this point would be bad but one more land allows us to start scrying with the castle vantress this has been a very solid clock against what our opponent is doing here uh and now it looks like we're going to deal with this. Let's see what this Soul Flare does. This is just going to be pretty sick, I think, if I could run the Mystic Subduel out on it. Although, that said, Disdainful Stroking it is kind of the same. Disdainful Stroke would counter a Supreme Verdict. I'm sorry. No, it would not. It would counter uh, the Ritual of Soot that our opponent could have here. But let's see what they're going to do. Gifted Aetherborn, so it's going to have Death Touch and Lifelink. It's going to have Double Strike, Vigilance, and Haste. And that's it. Right? Yeah. So I think we could just beat this thing with the Mystic Subduel. And keep open the Disdainful Stroke. Since we're not going to have Lethal next turn, uh, Subduel, not going to answer a Ritual of Soot, Disdainful Stroke can. So I guess we'll let this resolve as uh, weird and kind of scary as that is. But I just don't care about it, right? This is a pretty crazy sideboard card, but we might be Mystic Subdueling our opponent into submission. 
All right, those are bad puns, but this is a good card right here. Look at that. I've played that Soul Flayer deck. The Soul Flayer is neat. It's bonkers. But, whoo, that was good. All right, Caustic Caterpillar from our opponent. Not too concerned with that one. Give me a Spirit right now, please, deck. Well, no Spirit. Uh, however, we get in for six. My opponent can now no longer shock themselves. Uh, they get one use out of their Mystic Confluence. That's it. If we'd hit a Spirit there, we could have pumped the Mausoleum Wanderer, which would have amounted to a Strip Mine, putting them at one, meaning they couldn't use the Confluence this turn. But I'm pretty sure they're only out right now. Is Ritual of Soot. Oh, okay. Caterpillar on that. That's also pretty good, I guess. Didn't think about that one. They're going to gain eight. Yeah, nice play. I was pretty happy with this. Maybe I should have countered. I mean, I don't know that we knew they had a, sec <laughs> a third one either. That said, we might be able to beat our opponent gaining eight life here. Wow. All right, let's scry away. See what we can find. I think a Supreme Phantom gets us there. Brazen Bar also gets us there. This, this will work out okay. They're going to get their hit in here. They're going to gain eight. Good for them. However, we are not dead. And then, heck, I can even disable stroke it on the way back down. So, uh, this should work out okay for us here. We're going to get in for six. We're going to be able to bounce this on their turn. You know, really, the, the big one for Soul Flare decks, I think, is whether or not you have whatever gives it Hexproof. Uh, I'm not remembering offhand which creature you play in that deck that does it. There's a few, I think. Hexproof or Indestructible are generally the big ones, but without Hexproof, this base, Brazen Borrower is just probably going to get there on the Soul Flare. Now, obviously, they could have their own spells to protect it from that, but otherwise, I think we're going to be there. I think we're going to be in the clear. We have the Disdainful Stroke for anything else that we care about. Let's see what my opponent's up to here. Two mana, paying the costs for a second Soul Flare. Now this Soul Flare will be getting to Sample Stroked. And this Soul Flare will be getting Petty Thefted. And if all is right with the world, this should be the game. So fingers crossed, we take it down here with the Petty Theft coming to the rescue, coming up clutch here. And we also have a 2-2 Mausoleum Wanderer that can hopefully counter anything. So I think that we might have turned to the corner. The Casa Caterpillar, it'll get in there. I hear ya. <laughs> Best news, as our opponent's at three, we even have the Brazen Borrower if they were to somehow wipe the board here. Uh, which seems pretty difficult with the Mausoleum Wanderer. Remember the hidden flavor text on this card. Sacrifice Mausoleum Wanderer or counter target and center source unless its controller pays X, where X is its power. That messes with opponents. All of this messed with our opponent, and we took down another one with Mono Blue Spirits. This deck is really sweet. That was a great match. All right, trying to wrap things up with a win here with Mono Blue. We're on the draw, but <laughs> this is, uh, I have to say, an interesting hand. This is a Brainstorm Brewery hand right here, Shacklegeist. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, look, it's very slow, clearly. But double Lofty Denial, that'll be pretty good. Uh, the Shacklegeist with a Curious Obsession, that's obviously good if we get to protect it. Uh, meanwhile, our opponent <laughs> leading off with a Glory Bound Initiate here. Lifelink and can be attacked as a 4-4 every other turn. That's certainly not bad. Uh, I will give them that, so... Yeah, this game's gonna be hard on the draw here, but let's run out our Shackle guys. Next turn, we can put a Curious Obsession on it. Draw a card, hopefully hit a land so that we can pass the turn back up with Lofty Denial. If not, we'll at least have Dive Down open. This card is uh, problematic, though. We can tap it down and stuff, right? As it attacks, so it's not a thing where they exert it. Then we can tap it down. They exert it as they attack, so we can't stop that. Unless we tap it down pre-combat, anyways, with Shackle guys. But there's no way to kind of get them on the exert trigger, anyways. This hand desperately needs a land, though. With a land, I feel okay about our sh our chances here. Without a land, it's going to probably be rough. I mean, I say that. Our opponent has shown us Abzan Colors and exactly one Glory Bound Initiate that they have not yet exerted. So, don't really know what we're up against. But I do know that being on the draw here, not having a one-drop, having this really defensive hand well 
It can work in some cases. Look at that promo Gilded Goose art. I hadn't actually seen that. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. Alright, well, Gilded Goose doesn't beat us, and that means that we now have our Lofty now open. We now have our land to throw our Curious Obsession on the Shackle Geist. Just like that, things are looking okay over here. Hopefully find some more land with this. Alright, I would like to always yes to this ability. I cannot imagine not wanting to draw a card in this game. Alright, there's a Rattle Chain, so that's even better. There's all kinds of things we can do here, honestly. My, my opponent could attack with the Glory Bound Initiate, and we could flash in the Rattle Chains to trade with it before they get a game life. We could respond to this Fatal Push by... It's either Rattle Chains or Dive Down. I'd really like to do some damage to my opponent next turn. I feel like we're going to have to race, so... Look, this is riskier, playing this Rattle Chains here. If our opponent has a second push or whatever, we kind of get got. Whereas, theoretically, we could have used both Dive Downs to actually be two Fatal Pushes. But, in this case, they do only have the one. I felt like we needed to get a body onto the battlefield, though. Um, as our opponent plays Veto. Alright, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. You think they might be exerting this thing? Yeah, safe to say. I guess I'm taking 7 this turn. This card's problematic. Cool card, though. Oh, it loses that much life. Not 3, it's not the, I was thinking the, the Uncommon, I think, from that uh, Core 21 set. But uh, that's quite a bit that we took, I have to say. Now, what is going to be the plan here? Shackle Geist has to get in. The plan might just be... To use the Shackle Geist ability to tap something down. Uh, there's a land. That's actually clutch. That's huge. Uh, especially, this is going to exert. So this isn't, uh, rather, is exerted. It's not going to untap. That actually helps quite a bit. Now now we can pass the turn back here and feel pretty safe. We have Dive Down. We have Lofty Denial. We have Spectral Sailor. Hopefully we just get a Lofty Denial <laughs> something and then throw this uh, Sea Dasher Octopus onto the Rattle Chains maybe. Maybe play the Spectral Sailor. Uh, keep open Dive Down and then throw the the sea dash rock to on it next turn that might be a better idea uh, that actually maximizes damage that way we're not replacing the two power on a rattle chains with the two power on an octopus and said we'd be replacing it uh, uh differently here uh that said our opponent going with the oath of kaya i guess i have to counter this because they might send it at my creature in which case i i get them but if they just send it at my face just to deal me six? That's actually far more problematic. So I actually think I just have to burn a counterspell on it. That said, that worked out pretty well for us, right? Our opponent really didn't really do anything. Uh, and now I can use this ability here. We can tap down the old Gilded Goose. I guess that's actually relevant now that I think about it. Because this is going to attack as a 1-1. One, one. Gilded Goose is a 0-2 with flying. You know, all of that said, though, we still have to worry about this. Because our opponent has Veto in play, and the Glory Bound's going to attack for four next turn. So, we're going to need to find an answer to that. And the answer to that is either going to be keeping two Spirits back, or what? It feels so bad to just keep two Spirits back, but that might be where we're at here. I'll get in there with this one. I mean, I could actually put the Sea Dasher Octopus on it. And then I get to draw two. I, and then I still have Lofty Denial plus Dive Down. I mean, this is a greedy line here, but why not? We, we need... We're going to need spells, I think, to win this game. Uh, I think we've still got a ways to go. So let's try to draw two and see what we can do here. And this is truly going to be problematic, beating this sort of combination here. Let's see what we hit. Mausoleum Wanderer and Island. Well, I have to say, I'm not unhappy with that at all. The Mausoleum Wanderer has flashed thanks to this Rattle Chains out. We get to tap down the Glory Bound Initiate. As a matter of fact, I will probably do this a different way. I'll probably just start by flashing in this Mausoleum Wanderer. We have the Lofty Denial open. We have the Dive Down open. If that's the direction we need to go. Um, you know, let's make our opponent 
sort of deal with it here, right? Tap down the glory bound initiate. You can slam the veto at me. Don't much care about that. You only have three mana because this gilded goose has no food. Although it's worth noting, gilded goose is a burn engine in this deck. You sacrifice those food tokens, gain three life. Well, that just makes me lose three life. You gotta say that's a, a pretty uh, a little bit of a different use of the gilded goose, but certainly not uh, so not a bad one. That said, our air force is getting pretty big now. We get to come in for five, seven damage this turn. That sets up for lethal next turn, sort of anyways. I mean, we have to keep the... I I'm trying to balance... Well, one, I guess the Spectral Sailor wouldn't get through anyways because of the goose. So, yeah, this game's going to be close, I think, but... I think we're going to be okay if I can keep my opponent from resolving anything else. And the second Lofty Denial might do just that. Uh, and having this Rattle Chains isn't bad either. So this is an extremely close game. But I think we've got a shot. I think our opponent's going to go up to nine with the Gilded Goose. Which puts us down to six. But I'm not seeing lethal out of my opponent. And I have multiple counter spells. Shackle guys, brainstorm brewery preview card. Putting in work right now, tapping down this glory bound initiate. I am a fan. All right, what's next? Veto getting in there. I guess technically you could give this Veto lifelink for five mana. Probably won't be doing that. All right, we're down to eight. Let's see what their line is here. It's three mana, four. Oh my gosh, it's four mana. For a Siege Rhino, good for them. Unfortunately for them, that Siege Rhino would have hit us quite hard. We got there. Uh, now what? <laughs> Ether Gust, I guess. Um, is this good? Do I just want to burn this on like a Gilded Goose? I'll put this on a Veto, that's for sure. I guess it's probably about this simple. I don't think I want to overthink this one too much. I mean, I think that we're... Uh, in a pretty good spot here. Now, think about what we saw from opponent. We saw some removal. I'm thinking that, you know, either the dive downs or the spell pierce. I'm going to cut a dive down. And I guess cut a... I'm not cutting Shackle guys after that one. Do I dare cut another land? That'd be pretty greedy. On the draw, though. I'm going to cut... I kind of want to cut another counter spell. I'm actually going to cut a spell pierce because we boarded in the ether gust. So we boarded in two counter spells. Um, and the, the in this case, we pretty much I think want to be countering what our opponent is doing versus protecting our things from our opponent. If that makes sense. I'd rather ether gust a siege rhino than have an extra spell pierce in my hand for to protect my creature or to have a dive down or whatever. So. Uh, we'll keep them in there a little bit because I'm a sucker for playing one ofs, especially when I can draw that one of on camera to win a match. But uh, let's see what we can do here instead. This looks like a bit of a hand to me. This, the double spectral sailor, the sea dasher octopus, the curious obsession. Now we have an engine. We have an, we have a card drawing engine set up. What we need to do is prevent our opponent from coming up with a better engine because. We're set in terms of our deck poking away at them in the air, drawing cards, doing our thing. We're good to go there. The question is whether or not we're going to be able to stop our opponent uh, from doing what they want to do. So, looks like here comes Fatal Push number one. Honestly, not too concerned about that. Things are going to get Fatal Pushed, and we seem to have plenty of Spectral Sailors here. Uh, here's a question, though. I mean, our opponent could go for something like a Siege Rhino here that... Gosh, I'd say we'd be forced to Aether Gust it, but I'm not too sure how we'd beat a turn three Siege Rhino in any world, actually. It's, good. it's quite the beating. Instead, it's a Veto that, uh, well, I guess we don't have to worry about because I can't stop it. Aether Gust's not going to hit that one. That said, though, Spectral Sailor hits a Battlefield. Curious Obsession is going to come down next. And we're still going to have the Aether Gust up. Actually, a little bit of flooding out here, but, uh,. Hopefully this Curious Obsession gets us out of it. Now, oh, we're going to get pushed again.
Can't say I was ready for that one. And because they sacked the food, they have revolt. Otherwise, I think I could actually mutate it into the Sea Dash or Octopus and be fine. That's a, that's a rough one for us there. I don't believe I have anything to do about that. The second Fatal Push, that one was painful. Now, it is going to depend what our opponent has to follow it up, but they have all the mana they need, and they have two cards in hand, so it's not going to take much. We have no clock, no pressure. They have two removal spells, and we don't even, uh, by virtue of <laughs> drawing, uh, I guess, a lot of lands here at the beginning. All we have open is an Aether Gust. We don't have any other two drops we can play. A lot of times we would, so let's just hope that they don't have too devastating of a payoff card here. I mean, Gilded Goose is kind of annoying. Maybe, heck, maybe I should have Aethergusted that thing on the stack. I don't know. I mean, ha somehow is Aethergust going to be the problem for us? It could be, honestly. I think we might lose to this Gilded Goose beatdown plan from our opponent. I won't lie to you, but I'm pretty sure the only thing we can do is flash in a Sea Dash or Octopus on the end step. Take uh, our turn, throw a Curious Obsession on it, and frankly hope that it's good enough. Because if I'm forced to Aether Gust something this turn, we're just gonna, they're just going to put it on top of their library and we're going to be too far behind to even get back into the game. So let's just uh, cross our fingers that they don't have anything too devastating over there. Unfortunately, they do. It's a Siege Rhino. I don't think I can beat this card. Um, but uh, we'll see. I guess we'll Aether Gust it. They put it on top, of course. Yeah, we might we might just be dead here pretty pretty quickly, unfortunately. Nice draw from our opponent. Gilded Goose starts pretty good. Who knew? All right, does this work? Does anything? I just not know how we're gonna beat the Siege Rhino. It's gonna come down. It's gonna deal a six damage and gain them three. It's gonna be a nine point life swing. While, by the way, giving them a 4-5 Trampler. I guess it's technically beatable here. I can play the Rattle Chains. I can put the Sea Dasher onto it. And we can start hitting them in the air and drawing a card. Two with the Curious Obsession, even. Uh, so, you know, we're certainly playing the game here. That second Fatal Push was a beating. Yeah, it's a free Mutate. <laughs> it's got Hexproof. Honestly, all my opponent has to do here... What are they doing? Uh, well... I guess your opponent throwing is always an option. I don't know if they misclicked there or what. They wanted to abrupt decay my Rattle Chains. Unfortunately, they let the Rattle Chains ability resolve. It has Hexproof, and I guess they accidentally directed that at their own Gilded Goose. The sad part of all of this is, I think we're probably still not a favorite to win this game. Oh, Shackle Geist, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I get to throw this Curious Obsession on here. My opponent says Sigh in chat. Yeah, I think they pretty clearly misclicked there. I've done that once or twice myself, friend. On camera, even. I guess the line is this. Our opponent's out of cards. I punt all the time. I guess it's allowed for my opponent to punt back, but we get a draw to. One of the we have a shackle guys, and now we have a mausoleum wanderer, and we can tap down the siege rhino every turn. So we might have pulled something out of this one here. Look, we've got a ways to go, but shackle guys <laughs> is proving to be an MVP right now. Now, like I said, we've got a long way to go, we truly do, because. Regardless of anything our opponent draws, even if they were to just draw land for the rest of the game, which they started with one right there. Uh, the Veto and the Gilded Goose Engine, that's that's a, that's a six life every turn. They're going to gain three and they're going to drain us for three. So, even discounting this Siege Rhino, uh, we're, we're getting the beat down here, right? And uh, the Veto doesn't change the clock quite yet. Another two hits from it probably would, but... All right, though, we get the turn back, and we get to draw a Rattle Chains. That's starting to look pretty good here. I get to attack with the Shacklegeist and this other Rattle Chains. 
I don't think I want to swing with a Mausoleum Wanderer and like bait him into a Gilded Goose Ball. I don't think I, I just don't think we at any point want to take a hit from a Siege Rhino. So let's just go ahead and get in there. And the beauty of this, we get a draw too. This is a lot of cards. It really starts to add up now. And Spectral Sailor. We'll use this ability. Another island and seven lands of play. This is just all coming up. Coming up, Corbin. As I might say, were I commentating my own match anyways. <laughs> I'm not going to speak about myself in the third person. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, not something I'm going to do. So that felt bad even saying that. I apologize. I just couldn't help myself. It was, uh, it was the pun. Not even a pun. It was what came to mind. Give me a break. Uh, meanwhile, though, we get to play the Spectral Sailor out here. I even get a, I get to pump this Mausoleum Wanderer. That means, actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use... Well, am I? I can't really lose the game if I just hold this up, can I? Just taking one more from the veto doesn't really matter. I don't think it does. All right, we'll tap down the Siege Rhino. Do I have Lethal next turn? I don't think so. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I find a Supreme Phantom, it's actually lethal. Um, and uh, another Gilded Goose. Well, that's not great for us. As a matter of fact, that means we're just dead next turn. Yeah, because they can use two mana here to make a food. Two mana to pop a food. That puts us down to seven. Next turn, they have one food. That puts us down to four. And yeah, maybe we're safe. Uh, the nice part here is, though, Spectral Sailor, uh, in case we weren't drawing enough cards with this deck, uh, Spectral Sailor gets to just activate here to draw a card, which is also possibly pretty sick. We're just digging for that, uh, uh, digging for a Supreme Phantom to win the game right here, or at least for some chump blocks out of Gilded Geese. Otherwise, things might start to get problematic, though. Okay. Uh, well, I suppose the line is just going to be to swing with everything here and then see what happens. Let's see if our opponent makes some blocks. If they make no blocks because it's not lethal, maybe playing these two gets us there, but maybe not. So we're swinging... Alright, they're actually going to... Well, okay, I mean, that's not a block I can even do anything about, right? I don't have any way to pump the Spectral Sailor... So I'm going in for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can make that 10. 10 is not good enough, and unfortunately I can't take out this Gilded Goose. So we're going to take 3. And this game's going to be close. No Siege Rhinos off the top, I guess, please. I say that. We get to draw two more cards here. They, they're not going to be cards that, you know, they're not a, a Supreme Phantom to win us the game. But they might be cards that interact. Anything that our opponent looks like they're going to have one draw step here. That island doesn't do it. And uh, shockingly, neither does that one. All right, well, let's pass the turn here. Down to seven. Okay, they're going to put us to four. Right, they're going to put us to four. Yeah. Oh, no. I've got bad news. I think we might lose this one by one life. Wow. Huh. Well, I'm thinking this one through, I guess. If I tap down two creatures to tap the Siege Rhino, we're actually in trouble here. Because I tap down two creatures to tap the Siege Rhino. That's fine, but then I don't have any more creatures. Then our opponent hits us with the Veto of all things. That's the third point I was talking about. Because we just whiffed on those two draws off of the, the Rattle Chains. And then they can make a food... Crack a food, finish us off, which means I actually have to draw a card off of the Spectral Sailor here and hope that it is a different spirit, uh, either a one-drop spirit that we can flash in as an additional chump blocker or uh, 
a Nebel Gas Herald would probably be the optimal thing here, but yeah, Aether Gust works too. <laughs> Ether Gust. I, I, the thing is, do I even have this game still? I honestly don't know if I have this game. They go to. Can I deal fourteen through chump blocks? I don't know if I can. What are you gonna do with Vito? All right. We've just been over here, woefully unable to find. Uh, Woefully unable to find the Supreme Phantom that we need. Honestly, I don't even know if we have enough. My opponent has two chump locks. I told you, the Gilded Goose and this Vito was a combo. It might not even matter that we... Gosh, and we had such a great hand here. Our opponent had that misclick with the Abrupt Decay. Gilded Goose, a heck of a magic card. I remember when they printed it. I looked at it. Obviously, the comparison is Birds of Paradise. And I thought... That's a worse Birds of Paradise. I mean, you only basically get to use it one, every, one other turn. One every other turn, right? It's not going to be better than Birds of Paradise, but I love that they're putting this into standard as sort of a, a, a less crazy Birds of Paradise. Well, flat, fast forward six months, Ren and Six is all over modern. That makes Birds of Paradise worse in the first place. Food synergy is everywhere. The Gilded Goose having that second toughness allows it to do things like block in this matchup. Turns out Gilded Geese... Gilded Goose, which, despite, I think, being pretty clearly at least an attempt at making a more balanced Birds of Paradise, is in a lot of ways just better than Birds of Paradise, which is just crazy to think about. We're going to need to get lucky. Lofty Denial doesn't do it. The only out we have is if my opponent goes for the... Uh... I guess if my opponent goes for the Siege Gang... We have a shot here, but I think they're just making a food and uh, going back up to 14 is just going to be... I don't think we have 14. I talked about it earlier. Just getting enough damage with this deck can be a real problem. And we're getting in for one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not enough. Not even close to enough. So our only hope is that our opponent chooses not to kill us with food tokens and instead tries to be greedy and kill us with a... <laughs> uh, and so they, they just try to flex on us and kill us with the Siege Rhino? I don't even know if that makes the difference, though, because then they could sack the food to have two mana. And we're just dead no matter what. They could say, well, well, maybe not. All right, this puts us to one. Wish I could give myself hex proof. Are they just going to sack the food or are they going to greed on me? All right, they're going to they're gonna do it the right way here. I don't know if I had ways to play that game differently. Uh, I guess I could have main phase drawn. Were we going to get there with this? Nope, sure weren't. Not with the 10th island of the game or whatever. Uh, all right, well, GG. I guess we died to Vito that time. Uh, fair enough. Uh, good match. Good Or good game, rather. Match isn't over. We saw abrupt decays. We saw... It's just the stupid Gilded Geese that are the problem. Uh, Disdainful Strokes, I probably should have had them in there in the first place, honestly. Uh, let's play those. i um, going to cut the Spell Pierce. I guess I do want the dive down. And cut the Mystic Subduel. Well, you know what? I actually want the Mystic Subduel. Let's see if I can get rid of the Nebel Gas Herald. It's a three drop that doesn't interact with the board in necessarily the way I need it to. I mean, look, tapping down the Siege Rhinos can be quite relevant. Um, but now that we're on the play, I think we want to try to be a little more aggressive. We have the Disdainful Strokes now. Um... Instead of the heralds, there these are a little faster. Look, in, in that game, you know the the siege rhino on turn four. Maybe we can handle that one, but fatal push into fatal push into siege rhino on turn three. That is quite the start. Frankly, it's impressive we were even in that game, uh, and that's probably a testament to the power of curious obsession and sea dash or octopus because our opponent had a godly draw. Now, I guess without the misclick, we're not even in the game. So there is that uh, certainly. But let's see what happens here in game three. We'll go first. Oh. 
I'm going to keep it. I think. I'll tell you, these one lane Curious Obsession hands are, they are tempting. They are very tempting, but I think it's correct to go for it. The upside to this hand in particular, should we find a land, is huge. So I think we just have to do it. All right, well, here goes. Obviously, I board out Neville Gas Herald and draw the remaining two. Uh, that's uh, quite the... Uh... <laughs> here we go. All right, never didn't have it. That said, it doesn't do a ton for us right now. This man is certainly going to waste, but it really does set the stage for the future here. This, this Mausoleum Wanderer at a 2-2 is always going to be big enough to swing into a Gilded Goose. Our opponent's going to have to you know, do something else with their mana if they want to get it off the battlefield. Uh, and now we have the Lofty Denial once they start spamming out threats uh, like Vito or Siege Rhino. And now we're in a position where just hitting land opens up the Neville Gas Heralds, uh, and we really just get to a good spot. So let's get back on the beatdown plan and see what happens. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. The dream, as a matter of fact. And here's what I'm going to do, I think. Well, maybe not. I'm kind of thinking about Nebelgast heralding down my opponent's Gilded Goose in their upkeep. It means they have three mana. Or access to four, if they have a land, because they did play that carry did. The thing is, I need to get onto the battlefield one way or another. Um... And Neville Gas Herald just has to be the play this turn. That said, I think we're okay to pass here. Because who knows? If they don't have the Siege Rhino, I mean, or the V... We have the Lofty Denial up here. I think it's just correct to pass and not commit ourselves to anything there. When we have so many options. I mean, we have lots of two drops, which means a fourth land allows us to play uh, any of the, the two, right? The Supreme Phantom, the Gust, the Denial, the Brazen Bar, or the Petty, ha Petty Theft, half of it. If we hit another land, we can pay two spells, which means on this turn, when I have three mana, I really want to play one of these Nebel Gas Heralds, and then, in theory, and this is something I talk about a lot in these videos, and I certainly, clearly, with all the mistakes I make, I understand the theory of good magic gameplay better than uh, actually doing it myself. This is why I cover events, don't play in them. But we want to find a way to use three mana this turn. Then next turn, in theory, we hit a land. Then we would use four mana, and we'd use two of those two drops. And then on five, we would have one... If we hit another land, we have one Nebel Gas Herald, and then we'd have... That's three, and then we'd have another two drop, right? So that's sort of the idea behind the whole thing, is you, you plan for the best. Now, with the way this worked out... It's hard to say, frankly. I kind of want to let it resolve... And then Nebel Gas Herald tap it down and just race the Siege Rhino. Without a Veto involved uh, and multiple Nebel Gas Herald in our hand, I think we can beat the Siege Rhino. That said, interacting with the Siege Rhino when it's on the stack is the best time to do it, but I think I just have to let it resolve here. Let my opponent go back up to 17 and then play a Nebel Gas Herald and tap it down. We'll then get to, and the thing is, the tap down here, unfortunately, it actually doesn't even really matter that much. As a matter of fact, I'm better off just tapping this Gilded Goose. This thing doesn't fly. And yeah, 17 all on life totals, that's not that bad for me. Since we're sort of on the front foot here, we're the ones attacking. Uh, we'll put him down to, to 13. We'll get to draw a card. Uh, sure would like to hit a land off of this one, but uh, we've run pretty hot on the lands already. I don't know if I can uh, really complain. All right, the Mausoleum Wanderer is not bad. So I think the play here... It's a matter of we have, a, a, again, a lot of options. I'm going to pass the turn. And this is something, I'm not going to lie, I've got a lot, I feel like I'm supposed to win this game looking at the cards in my hand and the board state as it is, but I want to try to navigate this one properly. This is one of those where, and I'm going to take this hit from the Siege Rhino. Uh, 
you know, without playing a deck a lot, it can be hard and, and knowing exactly what your opponents are up to. It can be really hard to, to navigate a situation like this. And certainly on my videos, I have lost games that I prob I almost certainly should have won. Um, just due to not being familiar with my own deck. That's a big part of it. So that said, let's see what my opponent's up to here. It's a very interesting turn. It's a very interesting game state. Is, you know, we kept a greedy hand low on mana. Don't know what our opponent's opener looked like, but... Uh, I know that Vivian Monster's Advocate seems like a spell to hit with a Lofty Denial or an Aether Gust. I suppose an Aether Gust can hit something in play is the thing. So I guess probably Lofty Denial. Also, my opponent is starting to amass some mana over there. Let's go ahead and take this thing out while we can. Uh, and this worked out. See, so drawing that one drop means we get to add the Spectral Sailor to the board here uh, and even tap something down. Well, it doesn't matter that much. I guess, you know, maybe I could have saved uh, four points, but... Uh, so be it. Wanted to keep up all my options there, but maybe it's we, we just knew that it was always going to go that way, so I could have played it pre-combat. Uh, possible, possible. Hitting land here, though, that's frankly just, just straight-up clutch because it is time for the Supreme Phantom to enter the battlefield. <laughs> I will continue to tap down your creatures. Always yield to this one. That's fine. That's a 4-4 four -four now. That's quite big. So, what's this attack look like? This is an attack for 9? It's pretty good. And remember, our opponent used their food token last turn to go for this Vivian. That was sort of their big play. They were hoping to make beasts with uh, reach counters. It would have been quite good against us. But instead, it's us passing the turn back to them in a situation where they don't have access to food from the goose. They have a lowly 4-5 or five siege right now. We have an Aether Gust in hand should they tap out for something big. We have a Brazen Borrower should that, you know, be what matters. It's going to be, I think, difficult to lose this one. Uh, and Vito doesn't kill me. And for what it's worth, I guess we can't hit Vito with an Aether Gust, so no reason to even think about it too much. But I don't really see what my opponent could have to get out of this one. As a matter of fact, they don't. They say, G G's. We have done it. Mono blue spirits. My opponent says cool deck. You know what? I agree. This is a cool deck. And this was a really fun match. This showed off a lot of what this deck can do. It feels like we don't have interaction because we don't sort of have the classic interaction spells. But you know what? Between the Neville Gas Heralds and the counter magic and the, some of the cyborg cards and the fact we get to play these brazen borrowers, we do have interaction and we did it that's a 3-0 with the deck all right let's jump on over to the deck here post punty pioneer what did i think uh offhand i would probably based on how many times we flooded out i'm not going to cut a land i would however add a second castle vantress i think um the only way you ever get sort of unlucky there is if you draw an opening hand with exactly two castle vantress in it which is extraordinarily low um, and that's without another island, because that's the only way you'd have them come into play tap. So I'm pretty sure you're safe to add a second Castle Vantress. And against a control deck, you're going to want it. Even against not control decks, we had a lot of situations where uh, we wanted to use it. The sideboard in a monocolored deck, I mean, it's a work in progress as always, right? But frankly, you maybe want more Aether Gust. Uh, <laughs> the sub duel, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to speak too much about the sideboard. I do know that you want... You're always going to want some combination of Dispute, Sphere, Graveyard Hate, whether that's Soul Guide Lantern or something else, uh, and Aether Gusts, I think. Um, as far as the main deck goes, maybe you want a third Brazen Borrower over, yeah, I don't know, something here. Uh, I think I'd probably, first thing I would do is cut like a Shackle Geist. Even though it's, excuse me, my preview card, and I love it. You really only want one. A lot of times it's just a 2-2 two -two for two. It's a great ability uh, but it's the kind of thing where you want to draw exactly one throughout the course of a match in a lot of circumstances. So I think I would probably, the first thing I would do is add another Brazen Borrower and cut uh, a Shackle Geist. Or add another card of some kind, right? Whether, I don't know what that would be. Uh, maybe another Sea Dash or Octopus if you want to go more that route. Uh, whatever, right? But uh, it's a pretty tight list. Those are the only changes I think I would see myself making. But I have to say, this deck felt strong. 
It felt like it has a very consistent game plan. It punishes people for stumbling. You come out of the gates, you throw a Curious Obsession onto a creature, and then you protect it forever. And what this deck was missing before is you would play things like the the Wizard counter spell and things like this that were, uh, frankly, probably just worse than Lofty Denial. Uh, so uh, the fact that you, you don't have to mess around with Wizards, you get to go hard on Spirits, I love that angle of this deck. Uh so there you go. I mean, the next step would be, I guess, talking about whether you can add a second color into here, basically looking more like a blue-white spirit deck that incorporates this. Uh, I'm not sure you... I, I guess you probably could. You could cut maybe a, sh a couple Shackle Geist, a Nebel Gas Herald, some amount of Dive Down, Spell Pierce, blah, 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 trim on the numbers, add a couple white cards, but I don't think you need to do that. I think just having this straight island mana base is very powerful uh, and can get you a lot of, of, of percentage points that maybe you don't immediately see. Uh, so that's the deck, everybody. I loved it. Lofty Spirits, this was this was right up my alley. I'll be playing a little bit of this one by myself. But thank you so much for watching Punting Pioneer. I'm Corbin Hostler. Uh, I know I mentioned my podcast a couple times in this episode, and I usually don't, but hey, it had my preview card. But hey, we just recorded episode 400, uh, which was a big deal for us. Eight years I've been podcasting Brainstorm Brewery, so that's pretty neat. If you want to check that out, do so. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week with Mining Modern here on Cool Stuff.